front line on NFTV. And of course, it is the TGIF edition, the Friday edition of Frontline. So far, we hope you've been having a wonderful time. Now, as we know, um, WHO, UN, UNICEF, all in one, they keep releasing results, statistics on um, the health issues of countries and problems that uh, are in countries and um, solutions and how to tackle majority of those problems. Now, on February 19, 2020, in a report sent to Premium Times, UNICEF convened by the World Health Organization said on Wednesday that Nigeria currently ranks in the bottom 10 globally in measurement of children's survival, health, education, and nutrition. Now, the report said Nigeria ranks 174 out of 180 countries just below Afghanistan, Syria alone, and South Sudan based on a child flourishing in index. Now, of course, we know that majority of these countries there were said are countries that have been um, war impacted, war torn countries. And the ranking is based on factors including child survival and well being, such as health, education, nutrition, equity, and income gaps. And UNICEF said the report showed that the health and future of every child and adolescent worldwide is under immediate threat. Now, today we're going to be considering issues that affect the nourishment of our children. We're going to be talking about issues based on their nourishment, malnutrition, undernutrition, the fact that UNICEF think there's a, there's a flood of sugar, soda, junk foods, and, and so on, which is affecting the growth of our children. And of course, to discuss this with me today is, is, is a guest, but it's also not a guest. Is a well-known face um, on Frontline, of course. He has been here to tell us more about lesser fever some weeks back. And today he's going to be shedding more light on malnutrition and generally the nutrition of our Nigerian child. Please welcome Dr. Adele Ebabarinza. Thank you very much. It's a privilege. <laughs> it's good to have you once again. Dr. Thank Adele Ebabarinza is a medical practitioner. And like I said earlier, he's going to be giving us an extensive search into nutrition. Now let's start with nutrition, like I yes. said. Yes malnutrition there's, yes. there's always a the problem of malnutrition which is one of the things that worried unicef like we know nigeria has had a problem of a lot of insurgencies terrorism and it has affected a lot of children yes. it's affected um, their nourishment how they are so most times when we ask people what is malnutrition they tell your child that is not eating well so as a medical practitioner can you give us an extensive insight into what malnutrition is well malnutrition from the word malnutrition just refers to poor nutrition and what that means is that it is either the person is not taking enough nutrients or f food, or the person is actually taking more than the required food that the person requires. So you could have two situations. One is called undernutrition, okay. and the other is called overnutrition. And both of them are forms, actually, of malnutrition. So overnutrition and undernutrition still comes under forms of malnutrition. Yes. Yeah. So it's overnutrition that will cause things like obesity. Okay. Why malnutrition eventually causes things like um, quash shocker, you know, starvation, and where the person appears wasted and slim. I'm trying to use local um, words, but um, more scientifically, we call it marasmus, quash shocker, underweight, and all that. So there are two different spectrums okay. of um, disease or manifestations of malnutrition, and they are both um, major problems. So sometimes when we see a child and we say, ah, or a boy, see your chicks, sometimes a child can actually be suffering from malnutrition. Yes, yes, very possibly. Because um, the truth actually is that the problem we have more in uh, underdeveloped countries uh, or developing countries like the third world countries like Nigeria um, is the fact that th there's a lot of undernutrition. Okay. Okay. Um, millions of people, I mean, die from, from undernutrition. Okay, um, but what you have in developed countries uh, is that you have things like um, obesity, which is becoming an epidemic. Uh, for example, in the U.S., about um, three in or to four or four in five people are actually overweight, okay. and that's serious. I mean, two in five are obese, which is a more severe form of overweight. But that's a different problem um, in developed countries okay. because developing countries because we actually don't have enough food. So overweight or obesity is much of is less of a problem, but it's becoming an epidemic right now because um, uh, at least it's just that the wealth is not evenly displayed in Nigeria. So certain people are having access to a lot of food, and so and of course junk is also increasing. Just as you rightly said, I mean the wrong um, food. So overweight is also increasing in Nigeria. Currently, the statistics are saying uh, between one to two in ten people in Nigeria actually um, overweight or 
obese, depending on the class you're looking at. So it's also a problem. But I think we have more problem with malnutrition, which is a cause of almost one in two child deaths. Okay. So for every child, for every child that dies in the country, which is about 2,300 per day on the average, and that is quite a lot, yes. half of them is due to causes that are related to malnutrition. Because a child that is well nourished has a low chance of dying from normal diseases, like a child that is undernourished. Right. Now, we've been talking about classes of people that might suffer from malnutrition. Yes. Now, can the malnutrition be categorized according to age? Can it be age-based, let's say, uh, maybe from zero to five years are the only ones that can suffer, or maybe to 15 or something? Can it be based, categorized according to the age of a child? Well, the frank truth is that most of the deaths that result from malnutrition and several other commodities of childhood occur between the ages of zero and five years. Okay, okay so um, beyond that age, you have less than um, 10 to 20 percent of problems. It's, it's not too common that you have malnourished children above the age of five, even though you can also have it. But the truth also is that you can also have adults that are malnourished. Yes, because if a adult is not eating, not taking the required nutrient, the adult can be malnourished. But it's just that it's worse with children because children cannot take responsibility for themselves. Mm. So when a child is starving, the child mm. has to depend on the parents. I mean, and if there are no parents, the child is just there and the child keeps getting weaker and weaker and weaker until the child dies. So it's more of a problem with children, but there's children under five because they can't, most of them can't even communicate clearly, but it can affect um, anyone of any age uh, range. All right. Now, now let's talk about the effects this malnutrition have on children. Um, what, what psychologically, physically, behaviorally, every aspect, what are some of the effects of malnutrition? One of the major effects of malnutrition, which is very, very important in children, is the development of the brain. Okay. Usually when children are malnourished in the first year of life, there are chances that that child may not be able to recover uh, mentally. The child would be poor intellectually and poor um, psychologically. And because um, food is required for the growth and the development of the normal brain. So the child may not be as active, as smart as his other colleagues. Okay, and that's um, very, very important. Okay. Another problem of malnutrition in children is because children that are malnourished add more risks of infections and are at more risks of dying from such infections. For example, almost every children will come up, a lot of children will come up with malaria at one point or the other. Yes. Um, children come up with diarrhea, uh, with pneumonia, you know, and many of measles and some of these diseases. But a child that is well nourished would um, recover fast from that disease. But imagine a child that is malnourished, a child that is starved, a child that doesn't have much um, uh, capacity in the child's body, and the child now is sick and start vomiting, yeah. the child is not eating, the child doesn't have much reserve in the body. So the chances that that child will die from that disease is actually very, very high. So uh, malnutrition causes more deaths and more sicknesses. Uh, and um, malnutrition also affects um, the, the society uh, because such children cannot go up to be, um, to, to, to be responsible members of the society. So it's, um, the, 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 the effect of mal malnutrition is very, very wide. And it can also cause damage to several organs in the body too. You know, especially when you, begin, when you have things like quash shoko and all that. So um, the effects of malnutrition is actually not too good and it's something that the whole world is concerned about. And one of the most, okay, I think I've mentioned the fact that it also contributes to mortality. So mm -hmm. if we keep losing our children at a fast rate, I mean, that's not too good for any um, society. No, no, it's not. Now, let's come to Nigeria. Nigeria is one of the largest producers of food in the nation. Now, it's, it's, it's a two week thing. The northern side has been said to be one of the largest producers of food. Yeah. They have rice, maize, and so many on. And one of the reports said that actually we have a lot of malnourished children yes. in that part yes. of the country that produces a lot of food. Well, what's your take on this? Well, um, there are many reasons that actually uh, will cost that because that is clear. That is very, very clear. Um, the, the, it's more. Uh, malnourishment in the north. In fact, more particularly, um, the northwest and northeast, and it's actually worse in the northeast. Shelly states like Adamawa State, mm -hmm. Bono, and um, Yobe State, where uh, Boko Haram or where there is terrorist um, mm -hmm. insurgency. And the reasons I think are not too far fetched. Well, first is the fact that, yes, you're right, um, a lot of northerners, um, their predominant occupation is agriculture. Yes. So it means they produce a lot of food. A lot of food products are brought from the north down to the south. But well, um, that doesn't also mean that we don't have mass production
in the south too. But I think one of the things that is um, responsible for this is that um, number one, education is poor in the north because you see, it's not just about the food; it's about understanding the role of the food or diet in children. Okay. So you see. Um, I remember we went to a community, um, my, our organization went to a community, um, a northern community, and um, they were feeding us, and they gave us, and this is a community where they rear animals, I mean, cows and all that, and they couldn't put any protein on our food. And it was amazing because you could see a lot of animals, oh, yeah. you know, uh, why not just kill one or something? So it, it shows that, and we could see their children were malnourished, it shows that they did not understand the value of profane to a child because if you keep giving a child carbohydrate, 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 which is the major source, major content of most of our diet, yeah. that child is going to be malnourished. So, I think with education, um, they can they will understand better that children need things like fish, like meat, like beans, egg. like milk, like yeah. egg. You know, those things are more important in a child's diet than the commoner food. I mean, like um, rice, yam, which. I suspect it's one of the bulk, it's the major bulk of their diet. So with education and health education, the not can actually um, work on this. Then another thing that must be, is an important factor is insurgency. Mm -hmm. um, because of insurgency, many people are displaced from their homes, they are displaced from their farmlands. I mean, they, they, they have to adjust to a new environment and um, uh, some of the food material, leaf materials, don't get to hold these people. So I think that also is a major factor why the North actually has a lot of problem uh, with malnutrition. With malnutrition. Okay, let's, 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 let's make it general now. Yes. It's, uh, we've discussed it's not only in the North. Yes. Though it has a larger percentage of it. But what are some of the reasons? Like you said, the South also plants. Yes. And of course, there are still cases where we'll see malnourished exactly, children. Exactly, yes. And like you said, sometimes it's not only about the weight. You see big children, they still suffer from malnutrition. Yes. So So... How can we, what, what do you think about the South here that have this is um, children with malnourishment? Well, um, one of the things that um, can that will contribute, because malnourishment actually is in the South too, not mm -hmm. just enough, and exactly. it's a big problem here. It's the fact that um, women need to be educated on how to care for their children. Okay. Uh, because it all starts from when that child is born. In fact, the first month is the most crucial. The first six months, very crucial. And one of the things that's recommended is exclusive breastfeeding. Mm. And it's unfortunate that based on the research that has been done, it's still said that less than 20% of women, that means that less than two in five women, provide exclusive, exclusive breastfeeding for their children. And that's one reason why we could be dealing with malnutrition. Because most Parents that don't give their children exclusive breastfeeding, especially when they can't even afford um, the best alternatives, which even WHO does not recommend, um, the child will be at the risk of malnutrition. Okay. And for some people also down south, just like in the north, so when people are winning their child off breast milk, yeah. they don't provide enough substitute. They just give them, you know, any food. Some people just win with pap, mm. and they don't put protein. They don't add protein to the meal. You know, and the child is just getting carbohydrate, there's no profane. So that also can put that child at risk um, of, of malnourishment. And also because of the fact that uh, many children, um, because of our poor environmental sanitation in many places, okay. um, even including our states, but thanks to the government, I mean, they're trying to do something. Uh, most children are at risk of common infectious diseases like malaria, um, pneumonia, measles, diarrhea. And all of these also has played a huge part in causing a lot of them to come up with um, malnutrition. So um, these are some of the reasons why you, you, you also find them in the south, exactly. and just like any other place in the country. You know, be, when you look at all these um, factors, it's, it's an it's an even distribution across yes. it's across the country. Okay, let's 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 talk. I will still go back to the horrible fact. Yeah. Because sometimes when we see big children, yes. we consider them healthy because yes. they are big. Yeah. And you've just said sometimes these big children can actually be malnourished. Yes. So how can we see? A child and identify that this child is malnourished. Okay, I, I know most people find it difficult to appreciate why um, obesity is not proper nutrition because obesity or being overweight is considered as a sign of good living. Cool. I mean, if you're not, if you're big, you feel that this person must be enjoying. But the truth is, we need to do the, our research well, and that's why the developed world is working hard on it. Yeah. Uh, because obesity brings it, an individual at risk of many things, things like diabetes, things like hypertension, things like arthritis, things like cancer, things like liver disease. I mean, you could just mention that, that, that there's so many, of, so many of them, you know, ovarian breast cancer and all that. 
that. So that tells you that obesity is not something you want to go for, even as far as infertility at times. Mm. Okay, so and when a child starts becoming obese, if the child is not careful, it's going to grow into adulthood mm. and it's going to get worse in adulthood. Why? Because a child has a lower risk of being obese than an adult. Why? Because a child actually um, does not, a child runs about, plays about, so they burn more energy. energy yeah. So if a child already has fat already, when it burns more energy, by the time the child is actually an adult, it, it's almost sure that that child is going to be morbidly obese. So what I'm trying to say is that. Um, it's also important that we ensure that our child are with the, our children are within normal weight. And it starts from number one, know the weight of your child. Mm, okay. You know, uh, one of the things that, uh, that, that amazes me when I, did, when I raise on my, my clients and they bring their children and I ask them, why is your immunization card? And they bring it and then I look at it. You see, on the immunization card, there is what you call the road to health charts. Where every time they go for immunization, they're supposed to check the weight of their child and tell the mother that... This child is underweight, this child is normal weight, this child is overweight. Okay. And they should do that at least to the age of five. But it's amazing that today, um, in several centers, the weight is not being checked. And unfortunately, a lot of women have this card, and they don't even hack themselves, they don't hack the health professionals there, or those that, look, we're supposed to check our weight. I should know if my child is normal, overweight. So what I'm trying to say is that, if you listen to me and you fall into that category, one of the things I challenge you to do right now is to go and check the weight of your child. So if you realize that your child is overweight, then you need to begin to take conscious measure to measure to reduce the weight of that child. And it starts from just little things. You know, I tell people, I mean, why do child, a lot of children get overweight? Number one is because of excess fats mm. in their diet. You know, excess, and, and that can come because the child is taking a lot of fried things, a lot of butter, a lot of margarine, you know, a lot of sugary and salty things, which we call junk, yeah. you know, and all that. And when you can reduce that in the child's diet, and you still continue to feed the child with protein, so don't say you reduce, no, still feed the child with protein, except it's too excessive, which is not likely, you know. And once you are making the required, that it's not like you, you don't have to stop all those things. Okay. Uh, because, I mean, when people talk about diet, most of the time they think you should not eat. No. Everything has the right quantity. A balanced diet is taking the right, all the um, class of food in the right proportion. proportion. Okay. So, the child should still take normal food, but you reduce some of these things that are unhealthy. And before you know it, the child will come back to normal weight. It's fact, it's easy to regulate the weight of a child than an adult. Yes. And you know the child will be fine. So, it's important we pay attention to this. So, the fact that you have all the money and you're eating all the food all the doesn't food. mean you're eating the right food. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, it's about LD, LD. Yes, LD. Yeah. Now, let's, let's talk about breastfeeding. We've discussed the importance of breastfeeding in children. Yes. There are some parents, mothers, that complain about lactation. Yes. The fact that they are not able to lactate properly. Now, how can this be worked on so as to avoid malnourishment in a child? Yes. This starts from before um, the womb, before the child is born. Okay. Okay, usually when women go to anti for antenatal care, number one, they should be cancelled on um, the importance of lactation. And that gives them the motivation because at times some women have early struggles with getting that milk to come out, especially the first child. So if they are not well motivated, they quickly substitute um, to um, artificial milk. And that in itself would even make it worse because mm. if you don't stimulate it to come out and you're using an alternative, then it may be more hard, harder to come out. Another thing is that usually during antenatal, before the child is born, the woman's breast should be examined. So women have inverted nipple. Okay. Means the nipple is inside. Okay. Instead of coming outside. So during antenatal, there are things that can be, and be done to get that nipple to come out. Okay. And that's the best time to do it. Okay, um, then after the child is born, if the woman now has challenges, there are still supportive care, there are things that could be done to make it easy um, for um, the breast milk to come out. Or the one of the challenges we must confess is that most of our women today are in the working class and not all um, employers give them the required time. Mm -hmm. Now, in certain states, women have up to six months yeah. uh, maternity leave mm -hmm. so as to take good care of their children, but not that doesn't happen in, in everywhere, uh, I mean, wherever where people work, especially where in the private, private um, yes, sector. So um, I think uh, the private sector also needs to be more considerate and understand that this is important for the life of our children. But it's a challenge most women will face, but with um, determination, with the right motivation, I'm sure they would be able to handle that. But in the event where 
they cannot establish lactation, then of course it's okay to consider um, artificial feet, uh, okay. artificial milk, like all these nan and all the likes. Okay. So, well, let me don't, do <laughs> you know, but I just mentioned a popular brand, but mm -hmm. any of the brands you understand works, would, would obviously. do, yes. And, yes. and that would not affect the child or let the child be malnourished yes, in any way. Yes, exactly. All right, now we'll be, we'll it's not the best, but it's better than none. Better than none, yes. oh, okay. We'll be talking about child um, obesity, malnutrition in children. Yes. Now, in, in the nearest future, as you see, Nigeria, do you see a problem of child stunt or child obesity within the children that are growing up now? Are we are we looking at an epidemic of where is it a child is obese or has a stunted growth? Well, we already have a big problem with um, stunting, with stunting and obesity already, uh, with stunting and um, wasting or malnutrition already. Because according to the latest statistics, Nigeria has the second highest burden of stunting and. Um, wasting or malnutrition in the world wow. the, you see the implication of this is this when a child is stunted okay. for example it's stunted as well with the height of the child, child okay. it means that the child has been malnourished for a long time okay. you know and, and based on records we have about 13.7 million almost 14 million children in nigeria that are stunted and we are we are second only to india india has about 44 million you know and taught to um, pakistan so uh, and in, in for stunting to uh, for for underway to it's about 3.4 million there about for nigeria so we have a lot of children so we, we it's it's already growing into epidemic proportions and you see with the way things are going there are, there are chances that it may even get worse yes. oh, okay. uh, because i mean uh the, the current government was supposed to do something uh, and i know they have started but i really don't know how effective it is um to feed um on the school children to, to feed school children yes. your yeah, homegrown feeding yes. you know that would have also helped a long way to reduce malnutrition you know because i, I was um, reading about what was happening in Bonn, and they were saying they would need um billions i mean to be able to help to feed cater to, to children that are malnourished so the truth is that as we got stunting as we got underweight i mean we, if, if we don't work hard on the statistics we have now, we're going to be dealing with a lot of problems. But as regards obesity, well, um, for the obesity in children, I'm not sure of the latest statistics, but in adults, as I said, we have up to um, two in five. Um, for overweight in adults. So, but for children also, it's increasing. It is, because uh, according to yes. one of the reasons for the UNICEF report was yes. the fact that the society now is saturated and flooded with sugar, yes. fast food, yes. sodas, and, and so many on. So this is one of the things that brought about the reports that we're having a problem of nutrition. Yes. Now, we're going to be looking at this. This might cause a lot of obesity. We have parents that substitute junk food yes. for children, especially when they start tantrums. Yes. And it's like, take, stop crying. That's one biggie. Take, stop crying. That is one BC. Take, yeah. stop crying. That is one box of chocolate. And, and a lot of that. So, do you, don't you think that in like five years to come, we're going to have children who are just. I mean, when you look at children now in schools, when you look at their age and you look at their weight, sometimes yes. you are confused as to how it commemorates because it's just massive and, and it's scary. Don't, don't you think that's a problem with obesity? Well, yes, it is. It is. Um, what, what you just described now, it's, it's real. And. Um, in every country, just like Nigeria, we have the, we have different classes of people. You have the lower social economic class, the middle, and the upper social economic class. You know, and the problem with Nigeria is that we're dealing with major two major problems. In those days, we just had to deal with infectious diseases. We didn't have to deal with cancer, yeah. diabetes. But today, now because of we are adopting even with the little funds that we have, you'll be surprised that some of these parents that give their children a lot of these junks, uh, it's good we don't mention names <laughs> so that we don't, we are not affecting certain <laughs> brands and all yeah, that. Yeah, that's true anyway. You, you know, some of them, it's not as if they are that rich. Mm. It's just as, just as you said, you just want to make the child happy. And at times, it's just a way of also feeling among, among you know, yeah. I bought this for my child, I bought that for my child, I give my child this to school, you know, and my child, you know, it's always, my child always satisfied. And in that way, they're struggling to give their child all kinds of junks. And that way, their child becomes obese or even unhealthy. So, just as you rightly said, parents need to be conscious of this. Okay. Parents need to monitor the weight of their child. Parents need to know when to say no. No, exactly. You know, parents need to be conscious of how much of these things they give their child or how much of these things their child have access to, you know, so that we can raise children that are healthy, you know, children that can grow into adults as healthy children and um, that can have a very good um, future.
All right, let's, let's, let's quickly do a chart. Yeah. Now, we have classes of food. Yes. Protein, carbohydrates, fats and oil, and so yeah. on. Can, can, we, can we have some sort of example as to how to balance it? Because there's a problem of where people complain, Nigeria doesn't have food. And then they start, oh, I had rice this morning. In the afternoon, maybe it is bread. And then in the night, they tell you, oh, I was so tired, so I just made it to Eba. And then you see that, you see that's a lot of carbohydrates. And people yes. keep complaining that we keep eating a lot of carbohydrates. Yes. And then you have another side of people that will come and say, no, we have enough food, we have protein, we have this, we have that. So can you, can you give us some sort of example as to a chart as to how to eat balanced diet, food, in the right proportion so that our children can at least look healthy. Not having money like some people will say does not mean you cannot eat healthy. Yes. Um, it's important, just as you rightly said, that we understand the class of food. We mm. have at least seven classes of food and we're supposed to eat all those classes in the right proportion. Okay. And let me just give a brief rundown. Um, the first one okay. are the carbohydrates. Yes. Carbohydrates are energy-giving food and because we expend energy every day, Yes. Uh, we need to use take carbohydrates. Our examples are um, our common foods like rice, like yam, um, like gari, you know, and most of the foods that we eat, uh, fufu, you know, and all those foods that we eat. Mm. Yeah, most of them are commonly carbohydrates. And it's important that we take um, salt foods. But we have to be careful. We have to be cautious with intake of carbohydrates because carbohydrates eventually will be converted to sugar excess carbohydrates yeah. and that is unhealthy so what we even say uh, medically is that you don't get the size of carbohydrates you take should not be more than your fist okay so if you look at see your fist and it's like this then that amount of carbohydrate is enough for you that looks for small an adult. for an adult what yes. about children well for children you also don't want to give them too much, too much. Okay. you understand you don't want to get give them too much they need more protein okay except um, they are engaged in excessive work so that size also might, you know, but, but most children will not be satisfied with that. But for adults, adults don't need much, much carbohydrate. carbohydrate. Okay, so um, then for protein, protein is also what we need to, proteins are bodybuilding food, you know, and you need protein to grow. And that's why when you talk about protein, the emphasis is on children. Mm, of course. Because um, you need your child to be well nourished. Okay, so things like milk, like egg, like beans, um, like, um, which other one have we not mentioned, like fish, you know, and all those things are good, especially for children. But adults should, too should take it, mm. you know, and even though it should not be too excessive. So, so people would say for adults, it should not be more than this, the size of your palm. So your fish, your meat, once it's becoming bigger than this, because people can take a whole chicken. Of course. And that could be excessive, excessive for okay. adults because some of these proteins contain cholesterol and some of okay. these things. So it's very, very important we know that. The top lot of food is fat and oil. Well, we would all take fat and oil at one point or the other because we take stew, we take soup, we take fried things. But the truth is that for adults, the lesser fat you take, the better for you because this fat tends to block the vessels that take blood to your heart and to your brain and can cause a stroke. You know and can cause death so it's important that adults regulate the amount of fat they take but children but children also should take do not take too much fat okay uh, butter and all that children should just take as little as possible now i'm yes. going to i'm going to ask you to hold yes. on yeah so far we've been talking about adults don't take too much children take this we yeah. cook when we're cooking our ass we cook for ourselves yeah. and for our children yeah. so how do we balance this that as well as it is okay for me much more importantly it is best for my child well, um, it's important we focus on children more than even ourselves. Okay. But you see, what we're talking about now is more about size. For okay. example, carbohydrates about size. So you want to control your carbohydrate intake, but you also don't want to give your child too little. So it's about size. Protein too is about size. See, the problem with protein, if you understand history, is that people take the biggest meat and give it to the father of the house. Of course. And the children are used to taking the tiny meat. You know, and they think that's okay. But in the real sense of it, that child should take that big meat. You should take that tiny meat. Oh, wow. So it's important we know that. Then for fat, okay. nobody really needs excess fat. Yes. That's nobody. the truth. Nobody needs it. But of course, uh, because um, fried things tend to stay longer, so we tend to fry things more. But ideally, we should try to minimize, both adults and children should minimize fat intake as much as possible. Okay. The next two things I want to talk about are amazing. Um, what I mean is um, vitamins. Okay. Vitamins are amazing because you almost cannot take too much of it. Okay. So, and you, are, you find them in fruits mm. and vegetables, especially when they're fresh. Mm. But unfortunately, most of the vitamins we take today are not fresh because the, the, the secret of vitamins is that once you place it subjected to eat, mm. 
you subject it to cold or um, uh, it's canned and all that, most of the vitamins are gone. Okay. The vi vitamins are usually best when they are fresh. Okay. You know, so we should take fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. In fact, th there's a plate model that says that if you have a plate, half of the plate should be vegetables. vegetables. Oh, okay. Yes, should be vegetables. Then one quarter carbohydrate, one quarter protein. Mm. Okay, so it's very, very important. Then the fifth class of food is minerals, um, which um, things like iron, like fluoride, which is in present in um, uh, some of our toothpaste, okay. um, then um, iodine that is in salt, they are all important. Calcium, mm -hmm. you know, and all that, it's important, and you find them in some of our diets. Then finally, you have water. That's the sixth one. Yes. A lot of people don't do well with water, because most of us just think water is just there. But, on for, but the truth is that water is the most important class of food, because our body lives in water. Mm. Our cells live in water. When the water, water is not sufficient, the cells begin to die. Okay, okay. Then finally, which is the seventh one, is roughage, which is present in food. The essence of roughage is that it helps in, in fruits. Okay. It helps your food to digest properly and help you to move your body well easily. Mm -hmm. So you don't go to the toilet and you're screaming. Okay. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So you find them in a lot of all these fruits and all that. So it's, all these things are important. So when you take these things in the right, right proportion, proportions, you're going to be healthy. So basically, we are saying a disciplined parent, a yes. healthy living parent, is the most important thing that is going to affect the, the eating habit and healthy the eating habit of your child. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Well, thank you so much. It's been wonderful having you on the show. Yeah. I must say, I've learned that um, obesity, it, it giving oh, fat doesn't mean you are you are very healthy, yeah. which is one of the things that we, that we need to learn as parents that because my child is big, of, obviously my child is, is healthy. And, and I'm sure we've, we've, we've been able to learn that being fat doesn't mean you are healthy and of course we need to work on making sure our children eat very well malnourishment is is real and it's happening and it's not just in a certain part of the country it is everywhere so please let us make sure that as well as we are trying our best to make sure our children eat healthy we're also trying our best to be disciplined as adults ourselves once again thank you so much for being on the show it's, it's been wonderful having you on front line it's the friday edition we hope you've had a wonderful time since the beginning of the show till the end of the show so we'll come your way again on monday I hope you have a very beautiful and healthy weekend. Bye-bye.